Well, welcome to the FBC Global Missions Podcast. My name is Jim Poole, and we are on the Tohono O'odham Reservation here in Arizona, outside of Tucson, actually about 30 some odd miles from the border of Mexico. We've been enjoying spending some time with our brothers here. We have Gary Hawkins, who's uh, been with us on one of our podcasts uh, a couple of months ago. Thank you, Gary, for being with us again. It's Enjoyed good to be this with you again. A couple of days together. Yep. Jay Juan, thank you for being with us. We're actually in Jay's hometown here of Cells. This is where he uh, was born, where he grew up. We're going to hear a little bit more uh, from Jay here about telling us about, about where we actually are um, right now. And, um, and then, then we've got uh, Christian. Um, he's living outside of Air, outside of Phoenix, uh, Arizona, and um, so we're going to hear from Christian here in a little while, little while too about um, what God's been doing in his life and doing in his heart to bring him to uh, where he is today and the work that he has uh, for him. So, in terms of Fellowship Bible Church, as you know, we've just been looking to the Lord for God's direction in terms of uh, Native American ministries, and we're just excited. For you know what God uh, would have uh, for us, and we're not quite sure, but we know that God is uh, has a direction for us, and a, and is going to lead us in what it is that He has for us to do. And so, Jay, um, thank you for hosting us this weekend. We yes. appreciate it. Yeah, it's been really nice to be with you and uh, and your wife, and and uh, so thank you. So, give us a little bit of your of your background, and. Um, and your your area here, the the town of Cells. Cells. Give us a little bit, a little bit of background. Right. Yeah. Thanks. And town is uh, is a, is I don't know overreach I think okay. for describing Cells. Sure. But it's a small community, uh, yeah. probably about anywhere from fifteen hundred folks to maybe two thousand. Uh, the autumn name for Cells is Komskudawawasik, uh, and it translates to uh, wedge turtle. And uh, so I, I've, I'm from here. My, fo- my, my, my people are from this, this area of the nation. This is the second largest reservation land-wise, anyway, uh, behind the Navajo Nation. And so uh, it's a big, it's a big area. And uh, just glad to have you all here. How many acres make up this About reservation? About 32 million. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's a big, big piece of land, and uh, takes you any, anywhere you go is an hour. Hour this way, hour yeah. that way. Yeah. How many uh, people are in in your tribe? Uh, registered members about thirty two thousand. Uh, members on the reservation on the nation here is about twenty eight thousand. Okay. Yeah, twenty eight thousand okay. folks. Um, a lot of young folks. Okay. A lot of young folks out here. Uh, Cells or Komskudawawasik is like the capital, okay. and all the tribal offices, the chairman's office, they all sit here. The major uh, hospital is here, um, so all the government, uh, tribal government uh, entities are here in cells, and then communities all over the reservation, uh, small villages, uh, in some places just maybe a handful of houses. Okay. Uh, but the the reservation is broken into eleven districts. Okay. okay. And uh, there are churches throughout the the reservation. Uh, for years, it was only Catholic churches. Uh, and then there was a strong uh, Presbyterian move in presence uh, early in the early 1900s, and uh, they established churches in, in a few communities as well. And then eventually the Baptists and other denominations came. But uh, church right now out of here is 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 not easy. Okay. I, I, and and I, you're I, pastoring a church I pastor. here in town. In fact, we enjoyed a, a, a service there this morning. Yes. And uh, we also just enjoyed a nice lunch yes. <laughs> after church there. Right, so, right. Thanks for having us in the lunch. Yes. So tell us about the church. You've been there how long, Pastor? I've been long? I've been there since 1997, okay. and I was ordained, licensed to, uh, to preach uh, okay. in 2003. Okay. And okay. then uh, became the pastor in 2004. Okay. All uh, right. So... Um, I Tell actually us, yeah, a little bit about the church and yeah background and things. I actually I actually grew up in a Presbyterian church and then uh, then later as uh, God got a hold of me in my life and uh, and I was able to 
submit and understand who he was in my life. I began to attend church there and uh, when I started in 97, there, there were a lot of older folks there, not too many younger folks. Okay. Good older folks, that really good people that just really loved on me and my wife and encouraged me. Uh, since have gone on, and I, I shared this about uh, the older folks, I, it, it hurts me so much to see them go, but especially because nowadays our, all, our young autumn people are, are somewhat uh, lost, not just spiritually, but just identity, not understanding who they really are. And when the old folks go on, that's a resource of who we are. We're, we're, this is, they're older, they've done it. And when we lose old folks, uh, it hurts me because now the younger ones, I don't have anyone to point to in the in the older folks right, right, right. for them to say see them this is how they did it this is who they are right. I don't have that anymore so right now in our church uh, we have a few older folks not a lot of young folks um, again I think that's because of the they're struggling to identify who they are as a people mm -hmm. and then also who God is to them sure. um, so not very many folks in our church maybe on a good Sunday 15 to 20 people yeah. um, and uh, but they're faithful those faithful few there love God sure love yeah. his word yeah. uh, really encouraged and and they were excited to hear a young brother here this morning but uh, yeah the church there's been there since 1940 okay yes yeah. 1940 it's uh, made out of old mud adobe bricks by a, a sister church up on the Pima reservation mm -hmm. came down helped us uh, help them back then put that church together and and uh, it's been going since yeah. it's it struggled at times and in some degree right now we're struggling sure. uh, but but it's it's remained a church sure Absolutely. the doors have not shut yeah. um, and I, I gotta believe God is faithful yeah yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're gonna be around us until he comes yeah and, and we enjoyed being there this morning like I said and in terms of giving uh, you know fellowship Bible Church the opportunity to you know see you know what God is doing um, on this reservation and also in your hometown right and then also in the church where God's given you the opportunity to pastor for yes. these numbers of years uh, we were thankful to be able to be there uh, this morning mm -hmm. so in considering um, the church and you know the uh, reaching out to uh, folks on the reservation uh, ministry um, on the reservation uh, give us a picture um, of what that looks like um, what are some of the challenges? What are some of the difficulties? Um, kind of try to paint that picture for us in terms of, of outreach and, and um, reaching, reach, reaching people. What, right. What's, that, what's right. that look like? Well, as I stated earlier, it's, it's challenging. It's, it's, it is difficult. And, and part of that is, well, there are many reasons, but, but one of the big pieces is life out here is hard. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It is hard. And so a lot of the families here uh, in, in many of the communities are, are really not families. They're, they're children there, either living with grandma, grandpa, or some distant relative. Uh, often, unfortunately, mom or dad are not in the picture. Okay. And so uh, as we go out into the villages, and not even out, but even right here in Selves, uh, I, mean, I encounter often uh, this difficult life that folks are having to live mm -hmm. um, and because it's so difficult I believe it it, it hardens them or it, it, it makes them really hard and uh, in some cases I, you know it just really hinders them from hearing the gospel uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, things are so hard and then I come and tell them about a God that loves them and they try to reconcile their life right now difficult mm -hmm. hard with a loving God mm -hmm. and it doesn't line up mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and rightly so, they're, they're preoccupied with how am I going to eat? How am I going to keep sure. the, the lights on? Sure. How am I going to survive? Yeah. Um, th that's real to them then. Yeah. And yeah. then for me to tell them about a God that loved them, mm -hmm. that died for their sins, you know, in some cases they're not wanting to hear that. They yeah. don't want to hear that right now. Yeah. They got other issues. So you mentioned that um, specifically that um, when you come to the home, and the kids are there, but the mom and mom and dad are absent. They're not around. Oftentimes, the kids are um, 
alone, being raised by the grandparents, or maybe even raising themselves. Like, yeah. so why, what specifically causes the parents to be absent in the home? A lot of those parents are young parents, and, and they grew up the same way. Okay. And then find themselves with children. And so, no guidance, no, 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 you know, mentoring coming up and how to live, how to be a parent. Mm -hmm. And so they're faced with all of this. Um, and then just trying to supply for their kids. Uh, often they turn to illegal activity. Uh, we are this close to the border. Unfortunately, many opportunities to make some quick, easy money. Okay. Um, that will often result in them being caught by law enforcement, mm -hmm. having to go to jail, prison, mm -hmm. and leaving their kids behind for someone to have to yeah. take care of. And, and then on top of that, the, the alcohol and the drugs. Okay. Uh, if they don't, you know, unfortunately, again, if they don't end up in jail, then a lot of them struggle with addiction. Sure, sure. And that takes them away from the family. Yeah. Can you share a little bit with us about um, culture? You know, we've been together uh, a couple of days now and it's been, like I said, just a wonderful time of fellowship. We've had chances to share about, you know, um, uh, native culture and how that um, oftentimes is a barrier in terms of, um, you know, one's relationship with God. So so how does, how does uh, you know, culture um, just play into um, and history, you know, how does culture and history play into some of the challenges that you guys are coming up against? Well, again, we second largest land-based reservation and uh, When you talk culture or tradition You have to be mindful that it's not the same across the whole reservation okay. And one side can have this cultural traditional way when the other side doesn't follow those practices and so uh, that is challenging to understand. You have to understand where you're at and what is the culture and tradition for that place because you don't want to be disrespectful. Now, with that said, a lot of the culture and tradition has been lost. And, uh, and uh, since it's been lost, it's, it's, they're trying to bring it back but now it, it doesn't really line up with what I remember being younger as okay. culture and tradition. Okay. It's almost a new culture and tradition. Okay. And it has many influences outside of the reservation, mainly other tribes. Okay. And, uh, and I, I'm really afraid for our people uh, because there's been created this new culture and tradition and uh, and it, it just leads or adds to more confusion. Okay, okay. And we are already struggling with identity sure, crisis, right, right? Right. So all of this, and folks are trying to yeah. navigate through life and deal with things and are turning for help to these cultural and traditional ways that aren't really their ways. Uh -huh. Thinking that that's their help when they really need spiritual help. Right, they need right. God. They don't need right. culture and they don't need tradition. Yeah. yeah, They sure do not need a made up culture or tradition. Uh -huh. uh, and so as I come, you would think they would be willing to hear God's word. Yeah. But for whatever reason, they'd rather listen to culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because you spoke about the history mm -hmm. and they look at God's word, the Bible as the white man's way. Mm -hmm. And the white man has not always done good by us sure. or any other people group. Yeah. So I'm thinking their thought is, I need to hold on to my tradition and my culture. That won't hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the my way. Right. Right. Um, as I'm trying to share with them a God that's a God of all people. Yeah. Uh, they're they're yeah. more apt to stay with their own culture tradition, regardless of it being made up or changed yeah yeah they'd rather go that way right and so that's that's some of the challenges yeah with culture and tradition out here right right yeah so um hopefully our viewers can see behind us is the um the town of cells yes. which is where you know where you guys are living and where the 
I'm not sure you can see the church, but it's not too far away from where we are. So, um, so here you are. You talked about um, some of the, you know, the challenges, and um, so what are what are you trusting God for um, in terms of uh, you know looking forward over the next number of months, the next you know six months, the next year? Hey, this is what this is what I'm trusting God for in terms of. Um, just reaching people and seeing people get saved, seeing people growing in the Lord. What are some of the things that you're, you know, you and your church and your family are trusting God for, uh, for this community? Yeah, we're uh, for me personally, and I want to say for the church as well. We're trusting God that He'll be faithful to who He says He is. Right. He's a loving, gracious, kind yeah. God. Yes, He is. And that. Uh, he will not turn away from his people. Um, and so we're trusting that if we'll just be faithful to him, just even yeah. a few of us, yep. Yep. that it just yep. take a few of us to, to be faithful to him, that he'll do a mighty work. Right, right. He'll yeah. show, and he'll do only what God can do, yep. right? Pastor Jay or First Papago cannot turn the people around. Right. But he can. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're gonna trust him to come and do what only he can do yep. in cells and on the dawn of the nation. Amen. And so we're going to do our part and be faithful in calling on him, yeah. trusting in him, yeah. and not feeling the need to change anything. Yeah. He's given us everything in the Bible, and we're going to stay true to that word. Amen. And we're going to trust him to do the rest. Yeah. And uh, although it, it's a little discouraging <laughs> sometimes and it's a little frustrating, Yeah. I'm gonna trust him at the end of it, he's gonna do what that's only right. he can do. That's right. And turn it around for his glory. Yeah. So yeah. Th that's 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 the encouragement I have to come to. Right. At right. the end of the day when yeah. I go home and sometimes there's about three or four people in the pews on a Sunday morning, uh -huh. uh, that I had to go home knowing that he's gonna do a work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I just will stay faithful and true to him, he'll do a work. Yeah. And so Yeah, yes. yeah. So I think was it um, yesterday we were talking a little bit uh, with everybody together about um, I think this is what you're saying you're 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 just trusting God to do his work in people's lives and to uh, create hungry hearts yes and people mm -hmm. and um, and that's you know that's uh, what you're you know that's what you want just for people that have a spiritual hunger and a spiritual interest right. they can only be satisfied by him you can't be satisfied by drugs or alcohol or traditions or whatever, but that can only be be satisfied by him. So for our listeners, you know, as you think about um, Jay and Donna, his wife, in this area and cells, um, just really pray for them that um, that God will really, in His faithfulness, like Jay is saying, that God will really just create hungry hearts that that um, that Jay and Donna and the church can begin to to minister to and, and to be open to spiritual truths Amen. so yeah yes. yeah thank you jay gary i'll come to you next and and uh <laughs> thanks for being with us again and um and uh you know a number of months scott mcmanagle called you god led scott to just call you and i that's you know there's no human explanation that you know scott just called you and that's a that's a divine i think um orchestration and intervention by God to just put us in touch with you and so thank you for your openness and willingness and hospitality over these past number of months as we've gotten to know you you know we all met in uh, in Tulsa uh, a number uh, two months ago which is where right. we met Christian and Ray and or Jay and a couple other guys mm -hmm. uh, for the first time uh, we had that was our second time uh, getting to know you meeting yes. you spending time with you and so um, if God hadn't, you know, put us together, then we wouldn't be here with these guys, wouldn't be in cells. And, mm -hmm. and so thank you for your um, your willingness to just be used by the Lord. And what thoughts do you have? I mean, here we are after a third time getting together. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not just in Tulsa, spend the time, but now we're actually on location with Jay and his community. What thoughts do you have about just what what God's doing and what you know what the Lord may be doing in the future? Well, across uh, America, 
and across uh, Canada, the First Nations people, I've been getting a lot of, of, of uh, connections with them of recent times. And uh, recently I was in a, uh, the National Convention, and that's uh, for the Southern Baptists, but that's where we held our annual meeting for the fellowship. And uh, we had a great meeting, uh, and, um, and we also set up a booth uh, to be able to share our ministry with concerned people. And it's amazing uh, how many people uh, are totally unaware of, of uh, the plight of the native people. You know, because one reason is because we're less than 2% of the, of the total population. And a lot of people, I've even had people say, uh, are, are there still Native American or still Indians or whatever they want to call us uh, in America? And uh, when the one thing that I do is when uh, I'm in a place like that, um, I get challenged by uh, people from like Colorado, Utah, or Wyoming, or um, some other states uh, that have uh, tremendous need and concerns and a uh, man from uh, around Toronto asked if I uh, could send some preachers. He just assumed that because we were a fellowship of Native American Christians in, in, in Oklahoma that we had this big resource pool of Native leaders mm -hmm. and we don't. And uh, that's, uh, uh, it's been 30 years I was here preaching Okay. at the church for uh, Jay's pastoring. Okay. And uh, I brought a group of native people from Shawnee, Oklahoma, and we ministered vacation Bible school, and I preached at night here, and things like that. And uh, uh, there's not been a lot of dramatic change. And uh, a lot of our uh, places, uh, there's slow economic gro growth. Uh, there's uh, what has changed is the amount of of uh, meth and uh, amount of uh, things that are gang related, uh, the things that are uh, a lot of the social ills of America, you know, it seems like they're magnified. On this particular reservation, the amount of uh, suicides, teenage suicide, is three or four times. How much times? Uh, it's high. It's mm -hmm. a lot higher than the national average. In, and it's that way in a lot of our reservations. Uh, the it's been a uh, it's always a challenge, and it's always disheartening in a sense of you know it's like the scripture that says about the harvest is great, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Yeah. And uh, when Christ you know rode into Jerusalem, went, and he looked at the people, and he he began to cry, and. Uh, I, I see that in, in my heart, but yet I see a lot of things that are, I always describe it as, um, I saw a picture one time of a, a young Indian boy, which I'm not young, but it's a young Indian boy on the back of an old reservation pony, and he's riding up over this hill, horizon, and the sun is coming up, and he's leaning up uh, on the front of the horse, on the, haunches of the horse up there looking, looking over the, the horizon to see what's above, what's coming. And I, and I say to, in my life, uh, I see um, an awareness. Uh, uh, one of the things that people have been connecting with me lately, they said, you know, we've got all these pockets of people that are trying to do ministry with Native people. We need to come to some kind of a a, a consensus mm -hmm. on how to approach because mm -hmm. we have some people that are doing this and some are you know like some may evangelism there's yeah. some who are working with youth and yeah. traveling across the reservation reservation right, right. and there's some who are yeah are uh, uh, missionary stationed yeah and uh, anyway I spoke to a missionary in Wyoming who felt threatened that he had to move off the res and uh, so, so part of what you said there was there's all these, um, you know, different people. And so, um, you know, the idea of, of, you know, possibly all of them coming together and trying to have. So here we are, it's our church. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, we've been working with, uh, you know, a couple 
brothers of ours, uh, Navajo, mm -hmm. and a different you know part of uh, Arizona on the Navajo Reservation. And um, God's just been leading us to you know to uh, see how He can broaden our involvement. And um, so um, you made a comment last night at dinner um, that that many many people call you up. Like Scott did um, a, a number of months ago to begin to inquire, um, but not, and they'll have an initial conversation with you, but then they won't call you back. And um, and so uh, what we talked about um, uh, is that as as Fellowship Bible Church, as we've begun to just you know get more information and more information and more information. Instead of it, um, you know, scaring us away, like, oh man, this is this is too big yeah. of a thing that we want to get involved yeah. in. This is too big of a mess. We don't want to. Okay, we've took a peek. We're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna look somewhere else. Um, what what it's done for us is it's actually drawn us in more hmm. and said, hey, um, we're trusting God. You know, like I like we talked about with you, Jay. And, we're trusting God as well. So, um, so, so Gary, um, you know, we're, you are the initial contact, um, you know, FBC is just before God with what God may have us to do. Um, do you have any, any idea as to, um, you know, how, um, how we uh, might be able to, you know, continue to partner um, can, can, what, what God might have in terms of, I know we're in the early stages, you know, what God might have for us in terms of um, um, our growing involvement with Native American ministries in terms of our local church. I was really taken by the, uh, the gentleman that's affiliated with you guys uh, in Canada that has worked with a First Nations guy that has contextualized some training resources. Okay. And that's where we're at is, is uh, developing we don't have to reinvent the wheel in the right. sense of trying to, but we're trying to find things that are working. Uh, and we're more closely identified with international missions as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, North, I mean, here in the United States. Uh, there's been that approach of a cookie cutter approach that, and, and it's like what Jay said, uh, the, the fact that even on one reservation, there's two different cultures. Uh, well, you take 574 tribes yeah. and it's all they're all different and they take 630 something uh, bands or governments of First Nations people and they're geographically uh, different their uh, uh, socioeconomic differences there's language there's uh, educational differences there's all types of things but the biggest uh, need um, and uh, we love I, I love reservations but over 70% of the native population in the United States is not on reservations. It's in the cities. And um, when, uh, when Scott originally contacted me, he was calling me from Africa, uh -huh. and I was in Oakland, okay. Oakland, California. And California has a native population that ranks high in the top five, Los Angeles. And, uh, but the thing is, there's of all these native people that are in New York and California, uh, there's very, very little work done with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, what our focus is becoming more is toward the pan Indian. It's a pan in the sense that a person who's unmistakably native, but who has lost their culture and lost their identity in the sense they don't know how to speak, they don't know how, they don't know the uh, traditions or ceremonies or rituals, and for some time, some ways, that's good. But uh, mm. um, but what they do want to do is uh, celebrate commonality, mm. and uh, we are we do have a lot of things in common that's bad in the sense of what you hear of. Um, publicize most alcoholism drugs suicides all those kind of things mm -hmm. but the the commonality is the fact that uh, we're original people here mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we see ourselves as uh, 
sometimes is a forgotten people or people who um, who indeed are searching for uh, uh, our place and uh, who are looking for not for a hand out but a hand up I yeah, always yeah, dr. Yeah. Blackaby's always been my uh, one of our heroes and one of our favorite partners but dr. Blackaby says it's not so much going and doing something for people as opposed to seeing what God is doing right. and then join God and right. how to and forward that's, that's what right. we're about yeah. Yeah. but prayer and uh, helping yeah. us find things that would be relevant that we could contextualize sure thanks Carrie um, and seeing what God you know seeing what God is doing and, and being involved in what what God's doing amongst amongst that's right amongst the people yeah but again thank you uh, thank you you've given a lot of your time to um, to spend with uh, us and our initial visit again in Tulsa here we are um, in, in, in this reservation and again in August um, you'll be joining Scott and some others in the reservation in yes. uh, South Dakota in August and um, and then maybe again later on in another reservation with Josh in Florida yes so I, I just say thank you uh, well, thank very you. much for your openness and your time to Help us learn again. We we're just um, we're just looking to the Lord for what He has. So, and, and Scott will uh, discover uh, the tremendous diversity, uh, and that's pretty. It's a pretty good um, illustration of diversity of, of the nations when it goes uh, to Laura Brule in South Dakota. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Christian, Jim, how are you? Pretty good. good. You look pretty sharp there. I do. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so just for our listeners, um, we have to thank Jay for for these. So uh, we're all uh, sporting our Sunday ties. So this, for church this morning. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you landed um, in in Phoenix, and kind of what your what your desire is and what you believe. You know the Lord's leading you to to be involved in. Sure. So my name is Christian Watchman, um, full-blooded Navajo American Indian. Uh, we also our tribe calls ourselves Dene, the Dene, the people. Uh, I'm a first-generation Christian. Um, family didn't go to church, uh, didn't know anything about the Bible or anything like that. And uh, my my story is it's just a story of trauma and tragedy, uh, and it's so common on pretty much all the reservations. Uh, my parents uh, divorced at a young age, didn't know the Lord, uh, alcoholism was rampant, uh, drug abuse, uh, emotional, sexual abuse. Uh, eventually my older three boys were born into the family, I was the baby. Uh, my older brother uh, committed suicide, so he's part of one of the statistics with suicide on the reservation. And as a five-year-old boy, I was the one that found him, and so I remember that day as if it was yesterday. And uh, that drew me closer to my middle brother. And he, uh, he was one that I looked up to, and he was kind of like my savior. And, uh, but he was accidentally shot in 1993. Mm -hmm. And so now my whole world is crashing down. My dad's mm -hmm. in, in uh, federal prison for almost killing someone. My brothers are both gone. My mm -hmm. mom's hanging on by a thread. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a mission church, uh, a missionary came out, their family, and started to work with the Navajo Indians out of, on the outskirts of Gallup, New Mexico. And um, we attended church. And for about one month of hearing the, the gospel, um, the Lord just really got a hold of our hearts. My mother and I uh, came to faith, put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And um, now, 30 years later, we have about 20, 25 family members that have come to faith, mm -hmm. are in church, serving, teaching Sunday school. My little sister is a missionary to the Taiwan people mm -hmm. uh, overseas, been out there mm -hmm. for five years. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I came to faith and God called me later on to be a, a preacher, a spiritual leader, a, a preacher of the gospel. Mm -hmm. I went out to Springfield, Missouri for my training at Baptist Bible College. It's been a college that's been established since 1950. Mm -hmm. And I was able to graduate with a uh, intercultural missions degree. And I just didn't really know what the Lord had for me specifically, but uh, throughout the years, he's put me in the education world. I've been a history teacher for the last 11 years. and uh, But I kind of did my own thing. But in 19 or 2000, uh, 14 the Lord got a hold of my heart at a revival service in Springfield Missouri we were attending Crossway Baptist Church and really committed my life back to the Lord remembered my call to be a proclaimer 
and um, the Lord worked it out in about five years to uh, bring us out here to Phoenix, Arizona specifically because it was a large city that need, needed a lot of uh, gospel mm. presence. Um, 100,000 Native Americans migrate to the city as uh, uh, um, um, Gary was talking about. And so we knew we needed to be around Native American influence. And so uh, the Lord just pinpointed us right to a, a specific area called Levine, South Phoenix. Mm. And he, he came out here to establish a church. We did it for one year. But we were we were basically alone, uh, no leadership, no partnerships, and uh, it's just it was just me myself and, and the Lord. And uh, but that, that's all you need, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he he spoke to me through uh, t the teaching and uh, study of his word that I needed to uh, establish partnerships. So we've been we recently became members of Foothills Baptist Church on uh, Awatuki, which is south of South Mountain, South Phoenix. And they, they've been tremendous. Mm. They've been praying for us, encouraging us. Mm. We're going through their leadership pipeline. Our, 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 our goal and our vision and our, our call is to establish a work in Levine or with the, the natives uh, in, in local reservations uh, south of Phoenix. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm married, 17 years old. My wife's Ashley. And uh, we have uh, Tatum, our 13-year-old daughter, and Connor's 10 years old, okay. our son. Yeah, it's been nice um, this weekend to you know, get to know your wife. Yeah. Ashley and your two kids and it's um, made me miss my family more. <laughs> I've been traveling this weekend, but it's been really nice to, yeah. to get to know your family some. Um, share with us a little bit about like Friday afternoon, um, we drove around the reservation that is outside Phoenix, sure. near where you live. What's the name yeah. of that reservation? Share a little bit of, uh, about that, that reservation there. So. Um, I mentioned 100,000 Native Americans move into the valley, but around Phoenix there are, are several reservations, and uh, the specific one is the Gila River Indian Reservation okay. that's broken up into several districts. I believe it's six or seven, and one of those districts is just 10 minutes south. So we live in a, in a, in a, in a suburb of Phoenix that is 80 80,000 people, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that's probably just about Winchester size. Yeah, close. And yep. uh, and so that's where we're at. Very diverse, and um, blowing up a suburb. They're, they're building every day, mm. and uh, but you go 10 minutes south, and it, you all, all of a sudden you hit a hard line, mm -hmm. and it's just third world type. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the Gila River, and uh, about a, a few thousand people, but they're also spread out in several districts. Okay. And so uh, we uh, we moved to this area and part of it was because of that area and once again the statistics are just as what my, my brothers here stated high in drugs high in gangs high in suicide and uh, but our, our goal is to minister to them and to give them a gospel um, one of the things in my life um, one of the things that is lacking that I've seen is just a lack of, of leadership when it comes to the younger people okay. I'll be 44 but um, um, one of the, my goals is to model and to be a, a spiritual leader and to rise up younger leaders and if, if they if, if I can show them by example model for them that's that's kind of my goal right yeah and you're sharing with us about um, you know there's there's Phoenix which obviously is a huge metropolis city yes. and then very close to that is um, is a reservation and you're sharing with us some of the like if you did kind of like a Google Earth type thing mm -hmm. and you know there's this huge uh, nighttime you see the lights and then describe that to us in terms of yeah what so we're talking about this gives a perspective of sure. just the distinction and the difference between you know the, yeah you do it yeah so <laughs> so if you uh, if you if you just get a little bit of in, um, um, information on Phoenix. It's uh, the fifth largest city in the United States. It passed Philadelphia a few years ago. Um, people are coming in every single day. It's probably uh, Metro Phoenix, about five million plus. And then the, so the reservation is, uh, as Gary had mentioned, maybe the native feel like they're forgotten people. And yeah, so you look at a, a, a picture at night and the lights are turned on all over the city and it's bright and it's bustling. And then once you hit the reservation, it gets black, mm. and you get it's a hard yeah. line, and uh, it's a noticeable line, and uh, that whirl, and that image is is it's dark. Yeah, it's, it's a heavy yeah. blanket spiritually. Yeah. Um, depression is heavy, and uh, even if you're a first time visitor, you walk on, you feel that heaviness, mm -hmm. and just imagine living there day in day out. Yeah, and uh, I've been a part of that, and uh, I've been. 
uh, born on the Navajo reservation at times no running water no electricity uh, and just uh, a lot of depression and uh, that's what I came out of God saved me and I, I want to continue to point people to Christ yeah 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 and so again uh, just the tremendous need you know there's this giant metropolis of Phoenix and um, and you know, Phoenix has been growing, 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 growing for decades, you know, centuries. But here's this, there's the line, and then just there's the darkness yeah. with not hardly anything being done, yeah. you know, for decades or centuries. And so, and I've met pastors and church planners in the area. They've been there for years, and I would take them on a tour there where we went, and they said, I didn't even know this was here. And yeah. They're, they're only minutes away. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, you're also, like you said, a teacher. Yeah. And so um, we've talked a little bit about, but share with our listeners about, you know, how you're looking to the Lord for the opportunities through the inroads of teaching to open up, open up potential doors for you. Yeah. So I, uh, I'm a bivocational. I'm a teacher, uh, high school history. Been doing that for the last 11 years. That's how the Lord has uh, really provided for our family and just also allowed us to meet um, uh, my coworkers and other family students. And so uh, here in Phoenix, I'll be going into my third year teaching. Um, I recently transferred from the west side of Phoenix to the south side of Phoenix at a school called Fairfax High School. And uh, that school is beeline directly five minutes south of this Gila River Indian Reservation we yeah. live next to. Yeah. And if any of the uh, local high schoolers that um, want to go to public school and want the closest one, they would head into my area. And so uh, being, um, being in that area, uh, I have as a teacher, I have a lot of influence and I'm looking forward to maybe starting a, a club, whether it's Fellowship of Christian Athletes or any other club to really start to um, mentor and really uh, get engaged with students. So I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. I've coached basketball in the full yeah. before in the past. I'm thinking about maybe doing that just to meet people. So a really great way to pray for me and my family is reaching out and connecting with those people in our area through education and through uh, extracurricular activities to see what, see if we can spread his word. And uh, I think it's gonna, I'm excited. Yeah. And, uh, and that's kind of what's going on right now in yeah. our family, in our lives. So did I hear you right? And if I didn't, just tell me straight, sure. no sure. problem. Sure. I won't take it personal, sure. but I don't want to put words in your mouth, but so you live super close to the reservation. Yep. The high school is super close to the reservation. Some students come to the school where you're teaching from the reservation, yep. so that can give you some opportunity to Native American work. Get yep. to know some of the students and begin to build relationships because all of us know any in any work we're involved in that it's just relational. Yeah. You know, five thousand percent. Uh, you know, relational that gives us the opportunity and the open door to share. So is that that's yep. building that's relationships? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, if the Lord has it, we would love to establish a work. Um, but we're just depending on the Lord. Sure. We'll, we'll follow Him. But yeah, building relationships. Yeah. And uh, living out the Word in front yeah. of people. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, Christian preached this morning at Jay's church. Jay. Yes had the guest speaker of Christian and it was great yes, yeah, amen. Ex exposed expounding the word this morning and Praise the Lord. and did, did a great job thank you all very much yep. and we are um, you know we're just humbled before the Lord as a church mm -hmm. that you know God's given us the chance to learn uh, continue to um, trust God uh, what is it that we're trusting God for There's, that's the question you know mm -hmm. and uh, so I'd like to say thank you to the to the church family for all the uh, uh, provisions yes. uh, for the travel expenses and stuff like that and this is something that the fellowship of Native American Christians we were uh, we are a 501c3 organization but we're a faith-based and uh, native led and, and native uh, people most of our contributions are our funding comes from native churches and um, um, one of the things I've always had envisioned is doing things uh, much like was done in February in inviting men from Arizona and from uh, South Dakota and from Florida and, from, and uh, which we were not, it would be very difficult for us to have done that. Yeah. And uh, with your help and assistance, I just want to give praise and glory to God that that you thought enough of us to do that, mm. and uh, my dope. Amen. <laughs> it's our all glory goes to God, and 
and without him, none of this is possible. That's right. You know, it's 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 his work. Uh, we are his kids, and people are his people. Yeah. And we're just absolutely we're humbled and privileged to be able to be uh, getting to know you guys more and working together more, and we mean that from you know just the bottom of our hearts and, mm-hmm. and um, just very sincerely. So let me close our time in, in prayer. So. So, Lord, thank you for letting us be together this weekend. Thanks for letting us be together on this podcast with those that are are listening and uh, and are with us. Thanks for just the Native American people. Thanks for these three men, uh, how you have put them into a position to be used by you to draw people into a relationship with yourself and then to see them grow in the grace and knowledge of yourself. As we've all said, we're just humbly uh, standing before you that for you to show us, for you to lead us and guide us in what it is that you have us to do. So we're just presenting ourselves to you for what it is that you want us to do. And thanks for these opportunities. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for listening. Amen.